Hi guys and welcome back to another video. You might be planning to buy a home in Canada pretty soon and have heard about this thing called the HBP or the Home Buyer's Plan and are wondering what is it actually about. Before I bought my first home in Toronto earlier this year, I also heard great things about the HBP and I was thinking of looking it up but I had some apprehensions. Would it be complicated? Will there be a ton of forms to fill out and so on? But it turned out that that was not the case at all. I found the HBP very useful in the process of buying my first home. It was not only easy to use but it also made things cheaper. Yes, and I'll explain exactly why in this video. In short, if you are a first-time home buyer, the HBP, the Home Buyer's Plan, allows you to withdraw up to $35,000 from your RSP to purchase a home. In this video, we'll go into all the details starting from what the HBP actually is and how it works, what the benefits are, how exactly it makes things easier and cheaper, how to use the HBP, so the steps, and also things to consider based on your situation. And that is also where I will make a brief comparison to the FHSA. A or the first home savings account. Now let's start. What's the home buyer's plan actually? For that, again, I will direct you to the Canada.ca website, which says that the Home Buyer's Plan or the HBP is a program that allows you to withdraw from your registered retirement savings plan, so your RSPs, to buy or build a qualifying home for yourself or for a related person with a disability. Now let's break this down. First of all, it's important to know that the HBP is a plan, it is a program, and it is not an account. It is used in conjunction with with the RSP, which is a registered account. So the HBP, the Home Buyer's Plan, allows you to withdraw money from your RSP. So in order to understand the HBP, you need some basic understanding about what an RSP is. In case you want to learn about the RSP in more detail, I made a beginner's guide for the RSP in a video which I will link up here. But in short, the RSP or the Registered Retirement Savings Plan is a savings account that is registered with the government. And it is only one of many other savings plans, including the TFSA, the FHSA, and so on. To this RSP account, you can contribute money up to a certain limit, which is also known as your contribution limit or your contribution room. And that maximum limit will depend, among others, on your income as well as a cap. One of the biggest benefits of the RSP is a tax benefit, which is that your contributions to your RSP reduce your taxable income. So what does that mean? Let's say that your income is $60,000 and of those $60,000, you contribute $5,000 in to your RSP. Now what this does is that this $5,000 that you put in your RSP is not taxable. The only amount that will be subject to tax is the $55,000. So the $5,000 in your RSP will not be taxed as long as it remains in your RSP. In general, at some later point, when you take out your money out of your RSP, that amount will be taxable. But the great thing is, and this is the connection to the HBP, if you take out money from your RSP up to that $35,000 withdrawal limit, then that amount, that $35,000 will not be taxed. So now that we got the basics of the RSP down, let's go back to the HBP. The HBP allows you to withdraw money from your RSP for a certain purpose, which is to purchase a home. To be exact, to buy or build, yes, you can also build a qualifying home for yourself or a related person with a disability. So what's a qualifying home? Let's briefly look into that. A qualifying home is a housing unit located in Canada. This includes existing homes, and those being constructed, including single-family homes, semi-detached homes, townhouses, mobile homes, yes, condominium units and apartments in duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, or apartment buildings all qualify. So what does not qualify, important to remember, is a share in a cooperative housing corporation that entitles you to possess and so on. But most likely you guys watching right now are planning to purchase a qualifying home, at least that's what I think. Okay, so just now I mentioned that currently the HBP withdrawal limit is $35,000. So this implies that of course you will need to have already saved up 
$35,000 in your RSP. Otherwise, you won't be able to withdraw that amount. But also note that there are some RSPs like group RSPs, which are usually employer sponsored plans that do not allow you to withdraw money from this group RSP. So one question you might have is what if I have multiple RSP accounts? Can I withdraw money from all of those or does the money have to be in one RSP account? That's also a big question that I asked myself because we had several RSP accounts and I thought, do I have to transfer everything into one account first and then withdraw everything I need? And luckily the answer is no. It doesn't matter how many RSP accounts you withdraw from. What matters is that in total, the amount cannot exceed $35,000 per person. Now, what if you are married or in a common law partnership? Can you possibly combine your funds to purchase a home? And the answer is yes. Both you and your spouse can each withdraw up to a limit of $35,000. So if you combine those amounts, that brings you to a total, a grand total of $70,000 to purchase one property. And that's exactly what we did. Both I and my husband, we had each our own RSP accounts. And when we needed the money, we each withdrew from our accounts. And then we consolidated all the funds into one account that we then use to pay for our down payment. Just in case you might still be thinking, why do I need to take money out of my RSP? Why not just save the money up separately um, in a savings account or maybe even put it in a GIC outside of an RSP and then use that to purchase a home? What's the difference? And this brings me to the benefits of using the home buyer's plan. By the way, guys, after I moved to this condo, I switched to a new French press. I used to use a Bodo which was made out of glass but it kind of cracked so in the end I decided to just buy a stainless steel French press because I knew that this would last forever it makes awesome coffee and it would take a lot to break it it's also quite cheap I think it costs 20 something 30 dollars or so so just in case you're also looking for a french press then you can find the link to this one in the descriptions below now let's get to the benefits of the hbp why would you use the hbp the first benefit is obviously that you have the ability to draw from some of your existing resources in case over these years you've been in canada you've already been saving up money in your rsp and suddenly you have this great opportunity to purchase your dream home instead of saving up the down payment and waiting longer, you can just take the money from your RSP and use that immediately. But the greatest benefit, which I already addressed earlier, is that the withdrawal of up to $35,000 is not taxable as long as you repay it within a 15 year period. Taking money out of your RSP to use within the HBP program is as though you're borrowing money from yourself. So you will need to return it, but you have a full 15 years to do that. But in the meantime, the money you take out is not taxable. So how much does that mean in terms of savings? If let's say you utilize the full amount of $35,000, or let's say that you're married and both of you combined use $70,000, that means that you are saving the income tax on that $70,000 amount. Let's just take a random number. Let's just say that your tax, your applicable income tax is 20% just to make the calculation easy. So 20% times $70,000, that is $14,000. So that is approximately how much you would be saving by using the HBP. Here's another benefit, which is of a more psychological nature. Using the HBP for my home purchase helped me to stay disciplined. Knowing that this HBP thing existed, that I would be able to save taxes, helped me to stay motivated. Each month we were putting in sums of money into our RSP, also saving up for retirement. But in the back of our minds, we knew that a portion of that would go towards a future home purchase. And we were so motivated to do that, not only because the dream of owning our own home seemed much, much closer, but also because we knew that we were saving so much money in the process because we were enjoying those tax benefits. And that's how using the HBP makes home purchasing also cheaper. Had we saved up for the down payment of our home outside of the RSP, then we would need to pay tax on that amount. But instead, because we put it in our RSP and utilize the HBP program, no taxes were applied to that sum. Okay, guys, and next up, let's talk about how to actually use the HBP, the steps, what you actually have to do. And don't worry, it's not complicated at all. Not as complicated as I thought, at least it is very, very easy and straightforward. 
But guys, something important that I really need to share with you is that before you even start your home buying process, it is so important to build your credit. And in general, it's very easy to do that. You can do that simply by using your credit card, the one that you have in a responsible way, make your payments on time, make them in full and so on. And over time, you can get to a very, very good credit score. And it is so important because the credit score, the credit history that you have will affect which kind of mortgage you can get with which interest rate and also what terms. But I know that some of you guys are new to Canada and you might have experienced some challenges in getting a credit card because you do not have prior credit history here in Canada. In that case, what you can actually do is get yourself what is called a secured credit card. So let me just quickly tell you about this awesome credit card, the Neo Secured Credit Card. Neo is a Canadian financial institution that is 100% digital. And they have this great product, the Neo Secured Credit Card. It's like a normal credit card. The only difference is that your credit limit is based on what is called your security funds. If, for example, you set aside $500 with them as your security funds, then your credit limit will also be $500. And by the way, you can get started with as little as just $50, which makes this card much more accessible. Even as a newcomer, you can immediately apply for the Neo Secured Credit Card as approval is guaranteed. So no waiting until you reach a certain income level. Neo also doesn't require a credit check, so it doesn't matter if you don't have prior Canadian credit history, but you do need to be a Canadian resident and have a Canadian ID. Another great thing, there are no monthly or annual fees. Why would you ever pay for annual fees for a credit card? And you can also earn an average cashback of 5% at over 10,000 Neo partners across the country. Best of all, you even get $25 as a sign-up bonus if you sign up for Neo Secured Credit Card using my affiliate link in the descriptions below. You also get three months of Neo Premium, which allows you to earn even more cash back. So thank you, Neo, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now back to how to use the HBP, and there are just two very, very simple steps. Step one is that you first need to check your eligibility. Are you eligible or not to use the HBP? Most likely you are. Let's go back to the Canada.ca website and briefly go through the checklist together. The first one is that you must be considered a first time home buyer. You are considered a first time home buyer if, in the four year period, you did not occupy a home that you owned or one that your current spouse or common law partner owned. So being considered as a first time home buyer does not necessarily mean that you never ever owned a home. It only means that you cannot have owned a home within these last four years. So let's say for example, that once you bought a home in your home country in the year 2010, and then in 2015, let's say you already sold that home. So it means that between 2015 or 2000, 2016 until 2023, now for eight years, you have not been a home or you didn't own a home and that means that you do qualify as a first-time home buyer so i hope you can check that one off the next condition is that you must have a written agreement to buy or build a qualifying home either for yourself or for a related person with a disability so if you do not have this agreement in place yet then you cannot withdraw the money if you're just in a looking phase where you're looking at different properties but you don't have an agreement yet then that does not qualify you to withdraw funds so you really need to wait until that agreement is placed and you have a price there and then you can withdraw the money the next condition is that you must be a resident of Canada when you withdraw funds from your RSP under the HBP and up to the time a qualifying home is bought or built. The next important thing is that you must intend to occupy the qualifying home as your principal place of residence within one year after buying or building it. So you can't buy a home with the intention of renting it out to someone else, then that would disqualify you from using the HBP because the HBP is kind of designed to help people make their first home purchase, the first home in which they will actually live. So those are the main conditions. If you want to read more details, you can just head over to the Canada.ca website. So step number one was checking your eligibility. And I hope that you were able to answer yes to all of those. Now to step number two, which is very, very simple. And at first I thought it would be so complicated, but it's absolutely not, which is to fill out the forms. So to make a withdrawal from your RSP, you need to fill out a form from the CRA and submit it to your financial institution. And you can find the form on the same website here. So over here, you see there's a link that will take you to form 
T1036 home buyers plan request to withdraw funds from an RSP. And we'll just very briefly look over the form uh, just to give you a peace of mind that is actually very simple because most of the questions that you will find in this form actually um, relate to the eligibility criteria that we went through earlier. So let me just zoom in a bit here. So there's the upper area here that needs to be filled out by the participant, which is you. And then there's a lower section that needs to be filled out by your financial institution. So just briefly skimming through the questions, you need to confirm whether you're a resident of Canada, uh, whether you have a written agreement or not, whether you've ever withdrawn any funds from your RSP before, and um, also whether you intend to occupy the qualifying home so you yourself are going to live in it and so on so i'm not going to go into all of the details it's pretty straightforward it's very easy to fill out you can fill this out in a matter of just 10 minutes or so so you just need to fill out everything and put your signature there and here in part c there's also a box in which you can state the amount of requested withdrawal for example thirty five thousand dollars or twenty eight thousand dollars or whatever and yes you can make multiple withdrawals and i'll address that a bit later then you have area two here which is to be filled out by the rsb issuer which is your financial institution so this form is to be given to your financial institution, for example, your bank, not to the CRA. So you do not need to send this form to the CRA. But do keep in mind that the CRA can from time to time uh, contact you to ask for documents to support your answers. So you really need to make sure that you answered all these questions truthfully and correctly. So some institutions will require you to give them this form in this exact paper form. But there are other institutions like online financial institutions for example wealth simple which we had our rsps with that already had the whole process online so instead of filling out this form we just had to click on a section to request uh, withdrawing funds from our rsp and that led us to a questionnaire where we answered these exact questions a few important things to keep in mind so first of all remember the maximum size of the withdrawal which is thirty five thousand dollars from your rsp but of course this does doesn't mean that you cannot withdraw more. Of course, if you want to, you can withdraw $50,000 but you will only be able to enjoy the tax benefits on the maximum amount of $35,000. But let's say that your home costs more and that you need a down payment of $50,000 and you absolutely need to take it from your RSP, then of course you can withdraw more, but to the amount beyond the $35,000 uh, taxation will apply. The other thing is also that there is what's called an RSP 90 day withdrawal rule. It basically says that any money you withdraw has to have been in your RSP for at least 90 days in order to enjoy the tax benefits. So let's say that um, now it's October and you just found your dream home, you signed an agreement, but in your RSP you only have, let's say, $10,000. But in fact, you actually need $30,000 for your down payment. So, so there's a $20,000 difference. On the other hand, in your savings account, you actually have that $20,000. And now you're thinking, can I just put the $20,000 into my RSP and then take it out so that I can enjoy the tax benefits? But unfortunately, the answer is no. In order to enjoy the tax benefits, the funds have to already have been in your RSP account for at least 90 days. So this is why, guys, it's so important if you have plans to purchase a home in the near future, future and you want to utilize the HBB program, make sure that you start filling up your RSB account, putting money into that RSB account so that it has time to sit there for 90 days. So at the time when we signed our agreement, we already had the funds that we needed in our RSP in Wealth Simple, as I told you earlier. So all we did was fill out the online questionnaire to confirm our eligibility and put in the numbers, the amount that we wanted to withdraw. And again, I and my husband, we each did this. And within just a few days, I think three to five business days, the money was already in our accounts. So we consolidated that amount and then then used it to pay for our down payment. You might be wondering about the exact 
time to withdraw the money. So when do you actually need to take it out? We actually withdrew money from RSP, I think about two weeks before the closing date, because we wanted to make sure that we had the money available on time, just in case there were any problems, we had a bit of a backup, but we also didn't want to withdraw the money too early. So I think uh, two to three weeks before closing time worked out very well for us. So guys, but there's also a maximum limit up to which you can withdraw the money under the HPP. So here it says that you must make the withdrawal within 30 days of taking ownership of the home. So if you withdraw any money after those 30 days after taking ownership has passed, then the money that you withdraw will be taxed. Okay, that was step one, check your eligibility. Step two, fill out and submit the form and receive the money. And step three is a far later into the future, which is a repay the money that that you withdraw within 15 years. Now guys, let's continue to the last point in this video here. So what are some of the things that you need to consider when using the HBP? And also, how does this relate to the FHSA, which you might have heard about? One thing to consider is, of course, the price of your home. Let's say that the home that you are purchasing costs $700,000 and you're aiming for a 10% down payment, which is $70,000. So if you have a spouse and you want to combine your money, each of you has a withdrawal limit of $35,000. So combine that $70,000 that works perfectly. But let's just say that the home that you want to buy costs $800,000 and uh, your planned down payment is 10%. You need $80,000 and you're single. You're your withdrawal limit is only $35,000. In that case, of course, it is not sufficient to just rely on the HPP alone. You might need to use funds from your savings account, or you can also use the FHSA. Yes, that's the awesome thing. You are actually allowed to combine both the benefits from the HBP as well as the FHSA. And with that, you will have more money at your disposal. And also guys, make sure that if you want to use the HPP, that your money has been sitting in your RSB account for at least 90 days. And I've actually made a video on the FHSA earlier in case you haven't watched that yet, the first home savings account. So if you want to check that out and see how you can utilize the FHSA on top of the HBP and your RSB, then you can watch this next video here. Okay, guys, that was it today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what your questions are. Is there anything that I forgot to mention that's really important? I'd really love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye.